Now there's a lot going on on the synth, so to simplify things, let's take a quick look at the different modules that you get on the ARP 2600V. Right now I have a preset loaded in. So to further simplify things and not see all these patch connections, let's load in a template. If I click over here, we open the preset browser. I'm gonna click on template here, and these are all the included templates. I'm gonna load in one oscillator square. So I'll just double click to load in that preset. It sounds like this. So a fairly basic patch with just a single oscillator outputting a square wave. All right, now let's take a look at all the different modules. On the left over here, we get a preamplifier. This is specifically for routing in external audio into the ARP 2600V. I'll show you how to set that up later on. Next, at the bottom, we get an envelope follower. So the envelope follower can follow this external signal, or you can route any other signal from the ARP 2600 into the envelope follower. There's a ring modulator, the two inputs for the ring modulator and its output. And then we get the three VCOs, the three voltage controlled oscillators, or the three main sound sources. They are almost identical, minor differences between the three. And when we dive deeper into the individual sections, we'll discover what those are. Moving along on the right here, we have the VCF, or the voltage controlled filter. You get five different filter types, unlike the original hardware ARP 2600. Next, there's the envelope section. You get two envelopes, an ADSR envelope and an AR envelope. Technically, this is an attack sustain release envelope. So I would call this an ASR envelope. Again, we'll dive deeper when we look at this in the envelope video. Next is the VCA or the voltage controlled amplifier and also a global volume control over here. You can think of this as your master patch volume level. And then there's this mixer cell section you also get a spring reverb emulation over here that you can introduce into the signal. Moving further down in the middle here, we have a noise generator. So aside from the three VCOs, you also get to use this as an audio source. And then there's this voltage processors. This can be a little confusing, but we'll dive deeper later on. A very important sample and hole module. Though technically there are two modules built into the sample and hole module. This is the sample and hole module side. And then there's this electro switch device that lets you switch between two different signals. Now on the original ARP 2600, you had speakers on the other side over here. But since we're in the software domain, Arturia have added additional controls over here. So you can think of this as a control signal generator. You can develop some fairly complex signals in over here. And we'll definitely explore this later on. On the left over here, we have some more modules. There's a chorus effect and a delay effect. Now you notice there aren't any patch points because these are routed into the signal internally. So if you just bring up the dry wet, you will immediately hear the effect. Same for the chorus. So that was the main ARP 2600 section. And then we have the sequencer model 1601. So this is a step sequencer, fairly complex step sequencer with all these controls over here. We're gonna spend a lot of time discovering all the controls of the sequencer. On the left, we have an additional LFO. I say additional because those main VCOs that we talked about earlier, these can also run in low frequency mode. You can see that LF option there. But if you wanna use those three as your main audio sources, you can use this LFO as an LFO. And then on the left here, we have some global tuning options, keyboard related options, and of course the actual keyboard at the bottom here. You notice that the ARP 2600V also has an undo feature, which can be quite helpful when developing complex patches. It's good to have the ability to go back in time. Unlike the hardware ARP 2600, the Arturia version can have up to 32 voices of polyphony. Now keep in mind, this is gonna tax your CPU, so be careful when cranking up the polyphony. All right, so that's a quick look at what you get with the synth. In the next tutorial, we'll take a look at how the internal normal connection works.